and welcome to another 3AB and Today cooking program. We, we are the, the Mitchell Sisters. Sisters. And I'm Linda. I'm Brenda. And I'm Cinda. And oh, we have an exciting program for you today because we are going to take you to Italy. Yay! Italian. <laughs> I love Italian. I, I think yeah, I don't know very many people that don't love Italian cuisine. Do you, sisters? Oh, I mean, no. And like, seriously, a, any place we've ever traveled in the world, you can always find Italian food. That's, that's true. That's true. Well, I have to confess, I just plain like food. <laughs> Yes, but Italian's one of my favorites. I, so I'm not really saying when I when I say, I mean, I don't really think I can say it's my favorite because food is my favorite. It's whatever I'm eating at the time. If I'm, a, she <laughs> is gonna love that banquet in heaven. It. Although when, Ooh, when yeah. we, we when we were in Italy together, uh, traveling around Italy, we found had some really amazing Italian cuisine oh. and some restaurants that stand out in my mind to this day. And uh, some of our recipes we've actually taken from some of those uh, recipes that we had and tasted over there. We've kind of recreated um, because we our own would we of would it. drive through little towns and we would just see a cute little restaurant and we'd go, oh, let's try that one. You know, I mean, we really right. didn't have a plan. No, huh? -uh. So I think that's the best way to travel anyway. It's exactly. stress free. It's just you, you're at and, your own, t you know, time and pace and and we wanted to eat where the locals eat. And one of the, I guess my favorite thing about Italian food is they use fresh vegetables mm. and fresh and herbs, fresh herbs mm -hmm. and I mean everything's so fresh and so it's I think that's really the, why I, I like, like the, it and yeah. I like the seasonings mm -hmm. and types of herbs mm. but maybe and the smells oh you know what taste. we're all excited because <laughs> we know what we're preparing exactly. today but maybe well, you would like to see what we're preparing today <laughs> that's right oh now this is my quinoa vegetable salad Mm, oh, that looks delicious. You're going to love it. And then it's not a time without some garlic breadsticks, right? That's right. Just make sure you're all eating them. <laughs> We're going to have white lasagna. Ooh, that's a twist. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Oh, and some Italian white bean soup. Ooh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. looks really good. And then we have some eggplant pomodoro. Ooh, mm -hmm. that looks good. And I just like saying pomodoro. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to top it off with orange bunt cake. Well, now, that, now, does that not make you all hungry? <laughs> it sure does. Because, <laughs> you know, and you know me, I just hate to eat. <laughs> I'm hungry. Well, let's tell people a little bit about quinoa. You better move this box. I keep knocking she it over. She keeps knocking this thing. I mean, <laughs> we're like, like this. <laughs> this is quinoa. And um, if you're like my, I asked my husband to get me. Let me put it me, over here so I can get a good look at it. How's I asked that? my husband to get me a box of this. And, and I mean, I can't even, I mean, I'll crack up laughing telling you how he, how he pronounced this. And I was like, honey, just say quinoa. Or keen, wah! I mean, <laughs> like, wah, I want some! <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really healthy for you. It's one of the healthiest grains that we can eat. Actually, quinoa is by itself is a complete protein, and mm -hmm. it is there's no gluten in it, so it is great for uh, if you're on a gluten-free diet. And uh, just when I mean, you add all the vegetables and everything else to it, it makes it um, an extremely healthy dish for you to eat. I have so. a little confession to make, though. Um, it was actually Cinda that got me to really um, try and actually enjoy quinoa because I kind of turned my nose up to it when no. I first saw it. <laughs> I'm a little bit picky when it comes to food. I know everybody knows, knows that. But when I first saw it, it didn't, that grain looks kind of funny. It looks different than a normal grain that I'm used to. And so I kind of would pass it right by. I wasn't going to. It, to take a look at it and and taste it, but uh, Cinda actually encouraged me to be brave and uh, and try it. And I got to actually, you. it's just because she was talking and I shoved the spoon in her <laughs> mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what did you think? I really liked it. I have to say, but not all quinoa is created equal. So if you've had it before and you go, well, I didn't really care for it, maybe it wasn't the right recipe. It'd be like saying you had, you know, vegetable soup before and you didn't like it. Well, everybody's vegetable soup is different. So you don't just turn your nose up, you, you know, try it. Maybe you didn't have the right recipe. So maybe it's not right. the quinoa. But right. it's, and I think that's what that's I, actually me. for anything. You know? But also I want to say, um, I'm going to put this back over here because I like watching her <laughs> knock it over. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, um, quinoa, the, I'm choosing the red Inca type because I think it's got the, um, I, from the ones I have read, has the highest nutrition. But there's different types of quinoa, too. Mm -hmm. So you can try, um, you know, the different types of quinoa. So why don't we just get started with this one? All right. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> Let me read the recipe for you. For this, you will need four cups of the red Inca quinoa cooked, one and a half cups of zucchini diced, one and a half cups of yellow squash diced, one and a half cups of tomatoes diced, one and a half cups of red and yellow sweet peppers slivered, one large avocado chopped, one half cup of fresh basil chopped, and then for the dressing, you will need three quart fourths cup of fresh lemon juice, four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and salt to taste. Mm. Doesn't that sound it good? Does. This is a so, gluten free recipe. I say let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> no. Go out long. Go long. <laughs> that wouldn't. That really, that really wouldn't work for me. Oh yeah, I this really, one. And this is the sports one with me. Go long. <laughs> I'm not very good at sports, folks. No, I never have been. <laughs> but I'll play the piano for you. <laughs> yeah. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> you know, I am excited about this recipe because I was with uh, mom and dad um, not too long ago, and somebody called and said, is there any way we can have some gluten-free recipes? And this is a gluten-free recipe today, so that is Well, exciting. I'd like to actually dedicate this one to our pre Thravian president, Jim Gilly, because we, we always like to have something special for him when we're cooking. So, Jim, this one is for you. <laughs> there you go, Jim. <laughs> I'm making it right now, so come on down. <laughs> okay, this is what it looks like cooked. And we're going to put this in the bowl. And then, now, notice um, I have everything like one and a half cups of the of the peppers one and a half cups of the zucchini now this is very scientific folks I mean please do not get over one and a half cups I mean make she is sure so pulling your leg <laughs> I know why this is so important because look at all the rich colors and when you color well, your, your plate, plate like, like a, a rainbow, rainbow you're getting good nutrition oh my you can't get better than this you know actually when we were in the prep kitchen I actually didn't even realize I was doing a cup and a half of this in a cup and I started laughing I'm going really I mean a cup and a half I mean if you and also if you want to put two cups in, in the, your when, sand, when you I would too exactly and actually when I was looking at this I was like Oh, you know what? I was thinking of Linda, and I was like, you could add purple cabbage. You could add, I mean, any kind of vegetable that you mm -hmm. want to this, your favorite. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like some of these vegetables, then just leave it out. And put what you like in. Okay, sisters. Okay. So just go, oh, you know what? Let me, get, let me give Brenda something to do so that she won't be knocking our boxes over. <laughs> hey, there's not even a box busy. near me. See that? <laughs> I need, I love the grape tomatoes. I just think they're a sweet, uh, they're, I like How the sweetness these? of them. Just cut them in circles. And, um. Like that? Yep, that's good. How thick? Like that? That's good too. All right. I and like, you know. I like those words, okay. Good, yeah. And you want this in here? And all of this can go in. How many you want, all of them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, we gotta make sure we get that cup and a half. And Actually, and, and remember, I'm just teasing y'all. And if one of these more. tomatoes squirts me, I'm going to try not to scream. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> you, want you know what I'm talking up? about, don't you? You're yes, slicing please. a tomato, all of a sudden it squirts at you, you know? That ha seems to always happen hey, to me. Hey, can I interrupt that slicing for just one minute? Because yes. I forgot to bring two knives, and okay. I need my lemons cut. All right. And I actually should have brought a serrated knife, so it's not her fault because I didn't bring a serrated, serrated knife. knife. Yeah. Well, you know what? I happen to know somebody that wouldn't mind bringing us one. Oh, Miss Melissa, <laughs> do you think you could bring me a serrated knife? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Melissa is, uh, Hoffman is my kids' time uh, production assistant. And she's, um, awesome. she's awesome, and she always helps us with our cooking shows. So we don't know what we'd do without her, and also our friend uh, CQ. Here we go. 
And of course, don't forget Bonnie. Oh, yes. Bonnie's got the very yes. important job of helping us in the kitchen um, with all the dishes. Yes, we appreciate Melissa, that. Melissa, come here and bring this to me, please. Come on. I think I'm going to have to go get it. <laughs> She's a little camera shy. <laughs> small one. <laughs> nice prices. She doesn't have a small one. Can you do that? I tried, this? folks. I tried. She doesn't have a small one. Is this, are these okay? Hi yeah. <laughs> I think they're okay. Hi yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Okay. I can do it. <laughs> uh, whew, glad to know that. <laughs> See how much energy you'll have if you eat all this good food? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sis. Since you feel got that left out feeling, I need the avocado diced up in there. Diced with this big knife. Okay. Yeah, challenging. <laughs> All right. Now, while she's dicing the avocado, and while Brenda's doing the tomatoes, I'm going to prepare our dressing. And for the dressing, you want fresh lemon juice. It just tastes so much better with the fresh squeezed lemon juice. It's um, I can't tell you how much better it well, is. Well, fresh is just, anytime you can have mm -hmm. fresh, it's good. Right. Exactly. And the, I really don't uh, add the, um, the dressing until right before I serve it because the quinoa will soak up the dressing. But um, I will tell you that even the next day, um, my husband was eating this three days later, and um, he loved it. He actually took it um, to one of his workers, and they were like, wow, this is really good. And it was like three days later. And so it's, you know, even though you're not going to have that, um, you know, that juicy, um, the, all the juices fresh, and stuff, yeah. first fresh, it still, it, it soaks up into the quinoa, and it really does add flavor. And so it just kind of marinates and... and um, uh, I think the flavors um, get it's even like better. It's like a good soup. I love a good soup the next day better than the oh, first day. Oh, yeah. Ever. You know, the flavors just seem to become more intense. Well, My you know. husband loves leftovers, and I'm glad because I always cook too much. All right, I have finished this and completed this job. Oh, wow. How now you can add that to the bowl. All right. And, and yes, um, we add that to the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have, hand it over. <laughs> Oh, just go around, sis. Okay, I'm, coming I'm, through. Move over, coming through. All right. I'm making sure there's no seeds in the in the um, dressing for you. There you go. And now, sis, if you will put um, the olive oil in that glass, and then in this um, right here. Nope. Where? In that glass. In here. Yes. Okay. Because I actually need. I mean, I like a shaker with this. And you put your lemon juice in. Okay. And let's put a little bit Is of salt in. Is that enough avocado, it. or did you want this other one in there? Oh, put it all in. How can you have too much avocado? And then I'm going to take a piece of plastic. Excuse me, sis. Let me mm -hmm. lean over you for just a minute. If you don't have a shaker at home, you can do By this. By the way, the, per the lady that actually sent each one of us a shaker, we really appreciate it. And she'd be using it right now, except hers is at home. <laughs> yeah. I actually need to bring it and leave it here, except I like it at home. So, take this and just shake. And you want to get that all blended really nice. And you, I mean, any way you want to blend it is fine, but this is just makes that easy, inexpensive shaker. And then, um, and see, that's a good here, tip shake. for them to know. Yep, okay. I'll let you shake just a little bit more. She and is also, trying to give me something to do. I know. <laughs> and then for the fresh basil, I just take my scissors and I bunch it up and I just cut the fresh basil in it, just like that. And um, we'll cut up, cut up some fresh basil. And then, sis, if you want to pour, pour that over yes, there? let me move this over here. Here you go. Way over there. And then we'll toss this, and that's it, folks. Can you show them how to look? Um, how you presented it over here? And then I like to present it um, in in um, hollowed out peppers, and I like to use the different colored peppers. It's beautiful. And also, that way. 
I use the bigger ones, and so that you can use a pepper per person. Or if you're doing, if you're wanting to serve this on a buffet, you can use the little tinier peppers, mm -hmm. and and um, they'll make a little beautiful? appetizer. Um, and you can just serve it in a big bowl if you want, but uh, you can be um, creative. Now you know something else? else creative, and that's going to go really good with that is my garlic breadsticks. Let me read the recipe for you. You're going to need two to three cups of white whole wheat flour and additional for flour for kneading, two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of canola oil, one teaspoon of salt, two packages of instant dry yeast, one and a half cups of very warm water, and garlic salt or garlic powder is needed. I love bread, period. I just, it's one of I my know. favorite things I love to eat, and, mm -hmm. and I don't eat it all the time, and I try to stay away from bread with white flour, because it's really not the healthiest thing for me, uh, but I love any kind of bread, and this is garlic bread, and I have a confession to make. I'm not really a big fan of garlic <laughs> bread, but I love, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I don't like I the garlic love breath. I right? love it. I love it. <laughs> you, but she does. I, I don't like raw garlic, Italian. but I like this. When, since it's an Italian program, I made it garlic breadsticks <laughs> for you guys. That's hilarious. <laughs> But I'm not a big fan myself. Boy, aren't but, you guys glad that we like it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, for me, the same recipe for any of you um, out there that are like me that really aren't fond of garlic, I use sesame seeds on mine. I make the same recipe and I use sesame seeds. And just seeds. leave the garlic out. And I leave the garlic out and you'll be just fine. Because you know what? My husband doesn't like garlic either. He well, does they not want garlic sesame, bread. Sesame breadsticks for him. This is garlic breadsticks for all the other garlic lovers out there. So real quick, um, I'm going to need my... Um, um, water. I'm going to need my hot water. I I'm guess I'll get go that. get okay. the hot water. Okay. Because I'm going to start here. This is a simple recipe. There's not a lot to it. And uh, but it, it, if you want to make a double recipe, it's fine to double this recipe, and you'll have more. That's no problem. Hot right out of the That's microwave. Right. Okay. Well, I've got. I'm going to start off with two cups of flour. I'm going to end up with more than that. Um, and I'm going to. But I'm going to start with that. Put my salt in, and. Um, uh, this is the garlic. I'll tell you what if it's garlic. Oh yeah, it is garlic powder. I was <laughs> like, oh, that's garlic powder. That's that's over there. I almost threw that in the bread. That'd have been disaster. I'm take my. Um, this is a, a rapid rise yeast, and so I just uh, you know no need to um, uh, dissolve it in warm water beforehand. You can just mix it right in your flour, and then make a little well in the middle. Add your oil, right in the middle. And I'm going to add, and you can even add it to your hot water if you want. You know, that I've done that before, too. Just add it all to the hot water. And so, sis, you can pour the hot water right into the middle of this. All of it? Um, yeah, just put it all in there. It's really hot. That's okay. All right. And then you just start mixing it up like that. And you're going to knead it just like you would bread. That's what you're going to do. So um, I'm just going to get it to a place where it's a dough consistency. And then when we get to that, we'll start kneading in the rest of the flour. And you'll see the reason I had to put is kneaded because you don't really know. There's no way to measure how much uh, extra water. Every flour different different flowers, different. Yeah, yeah, different flowers yeah. will. There's a um, different moisture content yes. in all the different flowers. So I've, you can see I've got a little bit of a dough going here. And you don't want your dough to be sticky. No. And so here's what I'm going to do. Um, you can just put that over there. I'm going to take some of this flour and I'm just going to put it, see how I just put along the sides of the bowl like that and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on top. And what I, the trick of really kneading a good dough is pushing down, I use this uh, part of my hand here, the uh, palm of my hand, pushing down, take it with your fingers and pull up and then push it down again. And then turn and then you just keep pulling up and pushing down, pulling up and pushing down. And it really is, is um, uh, goes quite fast and you can do it with your knuckles this way if you want or you can do it your palm. I had a friend say, well, I always do mine with my knuckles and I never tried that before, but you know what? It works fine. You can just call what? it knuckle sandwich instead of <laughs> <laughs> knuckle bread. <laughs> That's right. And when it starts getting sticky, you're going to need to add a little more flour. And you're just going to keep kneading, like kneading, like kneading like that until um, it gets a, a nice elastic and uh, uh, in and the not touch sticky. and not sticky, go all the way around 
And I'm not um, going to continue with that because I want to show you how to make the breadsticks. But when you get a nice dough like this, um, then what I do, um, and you're going to need it for at least five minutes. And then you're going to um, put it and spray some uh, nonstick cooking spray on that. And then you're going to let it rise and double in size and set it aside. Now, okay, we're, well, going set it aside. we're going to put the towel on top of that for right now. And um, uh, I'm going to, um, let's see, can you spray some um, spray on there for me? On top? While you're spraying, then I'm going to get this, this dough off my hands. And I did it. Okay. Did I get you? <laughs> okay. You did what? Okay, thank you. Boy, wasn't that nice? Shh, don't tell her. She'll, she'll, what? no, don't what tell her. Do? I didn't do anything. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to just knead this in here just real quick like that, just um, since it's been setting and ready. And this is such a nice um, dough um, that's, and what I'm going to do is we're going to divide this in half, okay? Um, or you know what? I'm going to do it one whole thing. All I right. Decided. Let's I'm just have one that. big breadstick. Let's do that. Because I'm you, really hungry and I like them, so. <laughs> can you spray this uh, work area for me, please? I All can. Over. Ooh. All right, good. I didn't get it on you guys this you time. You can use a rolling pan if you want, but I really don't use one. And so I say to, to just... I don't I, use them either. <laughs> I just pat it off. Um, I, don't, I don't say I never use one. I just don't have mm -hmm. to spray that for me, please. Well, I, I'm just going to okay. keep my hand on this. I am ready with the spray. Okay, and then I need right. a sharp knife. And I think there's one behind you. Um, and let's see. So if you do it about 16 inches, about that. I don't know how much that is. You don't have to measure it. Just eyeball it. <laughs> say. You know? And about and it's about six inches this way from here to here, and I don't know probably, um, and you want it the same width. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut it in half, okay, and then you're going to cut it in half again. So you're making four. I'm ready with this. If you need if I, you need the spray, I'm ready. I might need it. I might need it. And then you're going to cut it cut it again, and um, and then cut it again. So you're going to half, and then you're going to half it again. So you're making, um, uh, what is it? Um, so 16, I can't even count how many it is, all right? She's laughing at me because I'm not, I'm trying to hurry so I can get this done. All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to pick up one of your, one, your ones you've done, and you're going to twist it, okay, just like this. And uh, can you move that can for me? Sir? You don't want me to spray? Um, yes, would you spray that for me? That'd be good. <laughs> I was okay. ready. All right, stop. Okay. And see, you're just going to twist it like this and, and go to each side of your pan. And then I'll take another one really quick. And you don't want to twist it hard or it won't be a nice twist. So I'm just going to take it'll it one more. it'll pull apart. It'll pull apart and it won't be a nice twist. So here we're going to try it again. One more time. We're just going to twist gently like this. See how I just really carefully like that. Just a nice gentle twist. And stretch to the sides and you're just going to keep on doing that and when you're all done you're going to spray it again uh, I was okay. ready and then you're going to sprinkle I have some coarse garlic salt and you're going to sprinkle along like that and you can put garlic powder for an, an additional uh, taste of a little more intense garlic um, a little garlic powder on that as well and then you bake that in the oven at about 400 425 degrees for about 10 minutes. They, they bake really fast. And voila, there they and are. I've got some ready to show you. Mm. Don't those look good enough to eat? Just make sure that everybody in the room is eating them. <laughs> She's saying that so everybody has garlic breath. You notice that? If everybody has, it has the same garlic breath, nobody seems to mind. I have actually tasted them, and they are delicious. <laughs> well, well, you know what else is delicious is Linda has a white lasagna. Mm, Linda, right. read the recipe. Let's read the recipe. One 12 ounce box of lasagna noodles cooked, four cups of frozen mixed vegetables thawed and drained, one recipe of tofu cottage cheese, one recipe of cream sauce. And for the cream sauce, you're going to need one cup of tofuti sour supreme, two teaspoons of McKay's chicken seasoning, one teaspoon of seasoned salt, 
one half teaspoon of sea salt, one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, six cups of unsweetened almond milk, one half cup plus two tablespoons of cornstarch, half a cup of cold water. For the tofu cottage cheese, you will need one 12.3 ounce package of Mori New Tofu, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast flakes, one teaspoon of McKay's chicken seasoning, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of grapeseed veggies, three tablespoons of roasted red pepper or pimentos. Mm. So, <laughs> let's get started. Um, we have already started our um, warm, milk. warm milk, and the reason that I chose to use the almond unsweetened milk is because um, I love the silk milk, but it has a sweet taste to it, and it's not really the best for lasagna. So For a savory. Uh, yeah, for a savory. I love it for everything else. But for this one, just find any unsweetened um, tofu milk, and it'll work the best for you. Okay, that you can add these seasoning. What well, these seasonings to it? Okay. And that's a little bit of seasoned salt, some McKay's chicken seasoning, a little bit of garlic, and the salt, and stir that all around. Okay. And um, then Brenda is. Um, I think I'll probably have to make the slurry, huh? Yeah. Busy <laughs> over here stirring. I got hard work to do. Okay. I mean, you know, We're gonna I'm working stop. here. Cinda's going to do the tofu. Um, I'm um, all for you keeping her busy. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to do the tofu cottage cheese. So she's going to put the mori new tofu in here. She's going to uh, take her fork and blend it all up and add her seasoning, stir it around, Could and then I have add her scissors, please? You sure, sure can have it. All right, right a little snip, snip. And while she's doing that, I'm going to add my cold water to the cornstarch so that when the so milk is hot, I can make a slurry. This is what is going to thicken, actually thicken it, um, to make it for the cream sauce. So we're just going to stir it around, and it does pretty well here. How you coming, sis? With now, you know, on the tofu, um, you said any kind. So that yes. means firm, extra firm. Right, right. Doesn't matter. Silken. It doesn't matter. Silken, You're tough, um, soft. Right. Now, do I mash this up? I, it, I just use this, that because I like that better than the water-packed tofu. So not water-packed tofu, but this is the more new tofu. Mm -hmm. How you doing over that slurry, sis? I'm doing it. <laughs> this is hot. <laughs> It's not quite hot enough. She's oh, slurred right. it. It's, it's gonna start. Now. It's gonna start just bubbling, and that's when you want to put it in when it starts to bubble. Okay, I'm gonna just see if I can get that thing to bubble. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's okay. Gonna chop that up a little bit finer, maybe. Maybe. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, I'll add a You're hoping bit of salt. He's over there. Get I tell you what, <laughs> she's we hoping. McKay, McKay's chicken seasoning, and we're going to use the Brewer's uh, yeast flakes, the nutritional yeast flakes. Mm -hmm. And then, when you get that all stirred around, we will add the other. Okay, we're going to put the pimentos in there. I chose to use pimentos. Okay. That adds nice color. It does. Mm -hmm. It makes it pretty. And then we're going to go over here and add your veginase in you there. You know me, I'm all for making things pretty. I know. We call for, her our garnish queen. For those who don't know what veginase is, Linda. Veginase is there's, a, there's a different sub types of Yes, it it's too. a substitute for uh, mayonnaise that doesn't mm -hmm. have, it's dairy free. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any dairy in it. So, and you can get it in a lot of stores, and if yours doesn't carry it, ask them. They'll Good. usually carry it. But we, so. also, we also know that there's, you know, this is an international network, and there's mm -hmm. many places in the world that can't get That's some right. of the products that we use. And if that is the case, that you can't get soy milk or almond milk or tofu, anything, you know, then you could still make this recipe and use the dairy products, and it right. would be the same measurements. Okay. While you're constantly stirring, okay. we're going to dump this. Uh, he works that, constantly. Yeah, <laughs> that key word for me, constantly? <laughs> yes. It's hot. So it doesn't lump. Here, let me give you a note break. To, note to self. Oh, I'm not trying to be wimpy over here. But no, note to self, get a really long handle when you're doing this. I don't know, <laughs> but I... Isn't the deal. I kind of like my job. <laughs> Are you eating over there again? No. She would <laughs> never do that, would she? Mm-mm. No. This although, is a... Although, I, 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 on Cindy's defense, oh, she's over there sneaking food. 
Okay, I'm going to spray me. my pan. Mmm, that's pretty good. Although I do have to say, uh, in Cinda's defense, um, a couple weeks ago I, I got a phone call. It was the funniest thing, and this lady was so upset. And she said, I just finished watching one of your cooking shows. And it, she goes, and I love your shows, but she said, this one was terrible. I said, really? What happened? Or, you know, what type of cuisine was? She goes, oh, I don't remember that. She said, but I do remember this. Cinda didn't taste a thing. <laughs> she said, that made her mad. <laughs> Ma'am, I'll be sending that check to you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can turn it off. Well, and now good. we're going to... And on to, that note... <laughs> since I, um... That really is good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hmm. go here. I like that. that. Well, I... Here, okay. That's good. I'm going to have to use this, so... Okay. We're going to put a little bit here. Mm. In the bottom of our pan. Uh, we we needed a ladle, beans. is what you're saying? We did. Okay. But that's okay because Same. we can Improvise. do it this Yes. And we'll just spread this around. Oh, wait a minute. <gasps> we forgot to put this in. So I'll oh, dump a little bit of this. No. So stir, whip uh -huh. that in. That's the tofu -y, yeah. um, sour supreme. It's like a substitute for sour cream. Okay. Can, I, can I make you feel a little bit better, sis? Um, it's not as bad as when I made oatmeal cookies and forgot the oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I can vouch for that one, folks. <laughs> and I scooched them out of the oven real quick. They were half baked. And I'm like, oh, no, I forgot the oatmeal. I scooched them all out and whipped up the oatmeal, and they turned out fine. <laughs> These are already cooked noodles. Okay. And so we're going to put about four of them on the bottom. All right. Guess I okay. Turn my keep over Sis, here. would you spread a little about half the amount of tofu? Seriously, this stuff was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just spread okay. that all around. Mmm. All right. That was seriously good stuff here. Here you go. I'm gonna get in the act. What okay. Else? All right, then I'll need that. Now da, da, these are da, 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 these mixed vegetables da, da, are not. Da, da. Um, uh, you know, season. So mm -hmm. I, I, if you want to, you can do this, or you can just leave it like you want. But I'm going to sprinkle you a little more bit this on here? of this on. So you got a little salt. Mm-hmm. She got a little salt on there. Salt okay. to taste. Uh huh. Okay. Go ahead and put okay. some more of that on. All right. We got more sauce. Mmm. 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 Is that good? Yes. I probably need to take and that And then all, you, all we're going to have to do is we do the same exact Good. thing again. Just keep layering for, up. And you end with just noodles and just sauce. And this is what it looks like over here How when it's baked. How long did you bake it? I baked it for about 45 minutes. Okay. At it's what a little brown. 350. 350. See, it's helping you out here. Isn't yep. that, doesn't that look delicious? Mmm. Well, you know what would go with this meal? Your Italian. How about my Italian white bean soup? Mm-hmm. Let me read the recipe. For this, you will need one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, one medium onion, one cup of celery, one garlic clove, three 16-ounce cans of white kidney beans, one 16-ounce can of great northern beans, three and a half cups of water, two tablespoons of McKay's chicken seasoning, one fourth teaspoon of dried thyme, four cups of fresh spinach, and three-fourths teaspoon of veggie sal. Now, the cannellini beans is a white kidney bean. That's right. And um, I, love they, them. I love them. They actually taste a little bit different than um, the red, dark red kidney beans. Mm -hmm. Here, the, try it. Taste it. No. See, it's a little different. Oh, okay, I don't mind if I do. Mm. <laughs> Good. You're the taster of the sisters. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. <laughs> It tastes a little bit different, but not a lot. But um, the texture, I think, is different. A, a red kidney bean is a little firmer texture. To me. And do you remember when we were in Rome? They actually sprinkle these on salad. Oh, that's that would be good. Yeah, it, good. It was really good. Oh, I liked yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I love beans and salad. Okay, Linda um, is stirring. We already have our onions and our celery are have been cooking, and so our onions. You want to cook them until they're clear, and the celery's are just a little bit Looking tender. Looking good. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna add our water. 
Do you know what I love, sis, when we were in Italy, even more than the food? Hmm. How friendly all the people were. They were oh, so hospitable no. and so friendly. They were like, and oh, you such a sweet <laughs> face. Oh, mama. <laughs> Like that was like at our grandma too. Yeah. You know, oh, she grandma was, was they like were that. always like that. Yeah. The hospitality is just awesome. Yeah, I like that too. Okay, McKay's um, chicken style seasoning. This is a vegan seasoning, and you can get it that um, this one has no MSG in it. I love the flavor of this. I mean, mm -hmm. this is one it's, of my favorite seasonings. Me too. We, we kind of grew up with that. We grew up with it, so we put it in a lot of things. And this is veggie cell, and I love veggie cell too, but if you can't find this, you can just use an all purpose vegetable seasoning. And um, um, time. Mom might be watching. I think you better get that out of there. You know? Well, I mean, there you go. Yeah, okay. And, um, you know, we could use, um, if you want, you could put some fresh thyme in it because when I'm at home, I use fresh thyme. Mm -hmm. And we have some fresh thyme. I actually brought some fresh thyme. And um, a friend of mine, she's like, I don't know how to take thyme off of, um, to, you know, to get the leaves mm -hmm. off because it's so hard. And I said, well, it's named time for a reason because it takes time. <laughs> so you'll just snip a piece off, hold it at the top, and very gently just kind of, actually, you just kind of go, this one even is, is more stubborn. Yeah. You just kind of go like that, see? And it mm -hmm. just kind of goes, falls off. So you, so don't you have want to be, the, the you do not want the, the stem. stem. Okay. Nope. You just want. And you'll have to, it, if it's like, this is a, there's different types of time too. That mm -hmm. one, see, I keep breaking. But see how that just kind of goes right off like that? And, um, but there's different types of time too. Okay, you, I mean, true. like I have several different varieties growing out on my patio, because mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, sis, let's use your muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're, about, we're, do we're our trying out garlic. a new garlic press. We're always complaining about the garlic presses. We're trying out a new one. So I, I went know, and got a I, new one. I like so. the color. I mean, I like the red, but we'll yeah, see I what we're doing. Yeah, I figured, you know, it kind of went with the, the Italian so, theme. We needed a red one. Red's let's a nice see how good color. Oh, over here, babe. Oh. There you oh, go. Oh, this worked good. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they've got a winner. Good deal. You know, fresh garlic, it just adds a lot of flavor. And okay. there's, a, I mean, it's, I like it so much better than, than doing the, the salt and the, yes. you know, the dry kind. So I like the fresh. Okay, now, sis, which, by the way, for the garlic breadsticks, if you wanted fresh chopped garlic on that, go for it. If you, the real garlic lovers will. We're adding our beans. Oops. Okay. One left. Oh, dear. Oh, what to do? That was good. Okay. Now the spinach, we'll let that, it's already getting hot, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So the spinach, I just go like this. You just take a food scissors and... Mm-hmm. I always keep a scissors mm -hmm. in my kitchen that I don't I use do. anything I but scissors. for food. Exactly. I only use it for food. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the pretty color. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. It is. And um, I love spinach. This does not have this soup does not have to cook long. I mean, and that's what I like about it mm -hmm. is it just puts together so fast. And um, now, you just you let this simmer for about 15 um, minutes, and you really don't even have mm -hmm. to let it simmer that long if you don't want because this spinach. As soon as it wilts. As soon as it wilts, you're good. Okay, now let's stir all that spinach in. Okay. Now, I like to take, um, you can, you could eat it just like this, and my husband likes a lot of chunkiness to his soup, but um, I was trying to imitate a soup that we had over in um, Florence, and it was a very brothy soup, and so I puree a little bit of it. Now, I have an immersion blender, but if you don't have that, then just take about a, two cups of this soup and put it in your blender, blend it up, and then put it back into the soup. So I'm going to do my immersion blender. Stand and back, sis. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what. And I'm just going to put that in. See, you are kidding. I no, know. No, it works great. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> We're like, whoa. 
and you blend that, you just blend it. You can blend it as much as you want. You can blend it until it's all liquid, mm -hmm. or you can just do it kind of chunky. And, and then what I like to do, because my husband likes a lot of, um, he just likes the textures of, of more food. So I'm going to add another can. That's where you're getting three cans. I, I, I did two cans first. This is another can of um, the cannelloni beans. And then I put in a, um, some great northern beans, too. And um, let, ready, that cook let that and cook for like another five minutes, and you're ready and, to eat. And, and I'll show you what it looks like when um, it cooks just a little bit longer. And some nice uh, uh, crusty Italian mm. bread with it, too. Doesn't that look mm -hmm. good? Mm -hmm. And you know what else is good with this? My eggplant pomodoro. Let me read the recipe. You will need one medium onion, two medium eggplants, four cloves of garlic, one medium yellow pepper, one half cup of green olives, four cups of canned whole tomatoes, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. You will also need one teaspoon of fresh parsley, one teaspoon of fresh sweet basil, and one teaspoon of agave nectar and salt to taste. Now I love eggplant, and uh, mm. I just I haven't and had I love pomodoro. <laughs> I just like saying pomodoro. <laughs> it really is fun to say. I've already got Linda over here stirring the onions and uh, yellow peppers, and they're just chopped and uh, cubed in like a cube, uh, small, coarsely chopped. And the, she's getting those tender over there. And while she's doing that, I want to tell you about what you're going to do with your eggplant. You're going to take two medium eggplants, and you're just going to wash them and leave the skins on, and you're going to cube them in just a small little bitty cubes like this. And then you're going to bake it in the oven at 400 degrees and, you know, for about 15, 20 minutes. And you, you spray it with a nonstick cooking spray. Do you sprinkle it with any salt or anything? Nope. You just you're just gonna do that, and then you're also gonna ha take it out and you're gonna flip it over and bake it again. So you want it to have roasted. You want it to look like this. And since we don't have time to sit here while it's roasting, this is already roasted. And you left the skins on too. Left the skins on. That's right. And in this corner right here, I want you to see I have some clo four cloves of garlic. And roasted garlic has a different flavor than than you would if it was a fresh. Uh, sautéed or, or sautéed. Yeah. It's a different, it's a sweeter um, uh, flavor actually. And so I just put my garlic in there and roast it on the side and I, I make me a corner like that so I don't have trouble finding it. If I mixed it up in here I would. And the Where reason that is, is the garlic? I'm going to take that garlic out and I'm going to mash it while it's still warm until it looks a little bit like this, almost like a garlic paste. And so that's what I, I do with that. So um, it's really um, a really fast and easy thing to do. I am going to go ahead and add this already roasted eggplant. Mm. And, um, yes. and we're going to just add it to your skillet I here. love eggplant. And sis, you're just going to combine And that. I seriously do like pomodoro. I love tomatoes. Always have. Oh, I love tomatoes too. Okay, and then here we go. I do. Want me to rescue those? Yeah, would you rescue those? I them? will. Because since they're not um, mashed, I really don't want them in the dish. Although it wouldn't, for some a garlic lover, they really wouldn't That's care, good. you know? Yeah, I don't So care. put that over there. And we're going to go ahead and take that garlic paste now and put in there, sis. We're going to put in your fresh basil, fresh parsley. I love and fresh herbs. I put in a, some red pepper flakes, just a little. It's not a lot. Um, some agave nectar. So we could call it arbiata. and Pomodoro. And then we've got the um, agave nectar, and then we've got some whole tomatoes. And I'm just going to put those in. Now, I want to tell you something about whole tomatoes. Um, these are the canned whole tomatoes. And the reason that I use the canned whole tomatoes is that they have more juice than if you were just to buy already diced tomatoes. So you will want to use the whole canned tomatoes. Our favorite thing to use is our mom's canned tomatoes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> All of us can tomatoes, but we haven't had time l l the last few years. We're so busy, uh, you know, taping kids' programs and children's programs that our mom has been canning for us, and we love her canned Thank tomatoes. You, Thank mom. you, Mom. Right from her <laughs> Thank garden. You, mom. We, yeah. we love it. We'll ask, call her, what have you been doing today? Oh, I'm canning tomatoes. So we really appreciate the canned tomatoes. But if you don't have a precious mom to do that for you, 
you can buy the whole can. But here's the trick. I would suggest getting a kitchen glove out, putting your glove on your hand, and put your bowl of tomatoes in there, and you're gonna have to squeeze those whole tomatoes until they get really all just, uh, you know, um, uh, not they're not a dice filling, but they're all just small pieces. You know, you squeeze them, mm -hmm. and uh, because it won't be the same if you don't do that. And then you just cook that until it's probably about 15 minutes is all, and serve it over your pasta. Do you your add choice. your olives? Um, oh yes. Um, oh. Uh, in there. I <laughs> yes. thought those were just to keep me busy. You notice I didn't have any extra salt in here because the olives are salty, and so when you cook that for about 15 minutes, it salts the recipe, mm. and you just serve those it over your good. favorite pasta or. Or rice or you know um, uh, great quinoa or quinoa even and I have some here on some angel hair pasta all ready for mm. you to enjoy oh, all that you need is the fork <laughs> oh well hmm I just happen to have a fork oh dear <laughs> While I hold her back, folks, while I hold her back um, uh, Linda read the recipe for your next <laughs> recipe she's got okay. dessert for the orange bundt cake, you will need two cups of unbleached white flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one tablespoon of cornstarch, a half a cup of all-purpose vegetable shortening, it's the non-hydronated, a half a cup of Trivia baking blend of sugar or Florida crystals, one and a half cups of orange juice, a half a teaspoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of orange zest, one teaspoon of vanilla, one fresh orange sliced in uh, rounds for garnish and a half a cup of fresh uh, raspberries for garnish and one orange frosting recipe. For the orange frosting recipe, you will need one cup of powdered sugar and two tablespoons of orange juice. This is a fast and easy cake to make. Mm. We're going to start out with this. Um, uh, shortening it says can you tell them about the shortening you were the one that picked found this for the, us I, I the brand I use is spectrum and I don't get paid for this folks but um, it's non hydrogenated mm -hmm. and so it's a lot better for you so that's the kind I use okay and you can use Florida crystals or okay. any kind of a special um, uh, sweetener that mm -hmm. you want and I'm gonna that's, put the sugar Mm -hmm. and you can't find it. Right. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to, sis, can you, oh, while you're mixing this around for me, I'm going to have Brenda make our orange zest. Okay. What okay. we do is we take an orange, we wash it, and then we're just going to grate it. Um, in we don't happen to have a zester right no. here, so we're making do yes. with a little grater. Yes. So that might happen to you too. So Yes. So that's all you do to make orange zest. Now, Cinda, if you can cream this. And then I will add some of this other stuff. This goes. Probably better take this sugar. out first. What do you think? Okay. Hmm. That's right. Because, boy, this is a nice, quiet mixer. I know, I like I it. I was prepared to scream. <laughs> and I think I'm wearing essence of orange right now. <laughs> that's not a bad thing, though. <laughs> yeah, that's better than garlic. I'm just like, whoo! Yeah, you might need that essence of orange after all that garlic. I'm just making it until it's kind of creamy. And then I'm going to add our vanilla in there. The little bit oh. of lemon. And then it's going to separate, but that's okay. We're going to add our orange juice. So we're not worried about the separation, right? No, we're not worried that it's going to separate. So it's going to look a little funny. <laughs> no, not, not that kind of funny. Oh. <laughs> I just want, you know, I didn't want her joking. Give me some sound effects. <laughs> okay, now turn it off. And I'm going to pour the rest in. And now I'm going to slowly, I'm going to add the um, baking powder. Whoops. <laughs> and the cornstarch to our flour. And I'm going to just stir that around a little bit, stir it in. And now you can slowly mix while I'm pouring in the um, flour. Uh, uh, uh. Kind of got orange zest all over the plate over here, so I'm kind of. And you can put your orange zest in here now. Okay. That looks like about the right amount. That's what I want to hear. I didn't want to put in the wrong amount. 
Oh, can I have that spatula, please? Sure. That's exactly what I needed. And this okay. is going to be just until it's stirred really um, creamy. And you're going to spray your pan. Okay. Mmm. This smells good, sis. And you know what? And actually, I can lick this batter because there's no eggs in this. Right? <laughs> and actually, with this, I usually do put a little bit of flour in, you okay. know, so I don't have any right now. But I usually put a little flour, shake it around, mm -hmm. turn it out, and then put that in it. I'll pour the batter in it. And then I, this pan, since this pan is, um, it kind of burns easy, I wrap this bottom of this pan in foil. And then I set it on a tray, and I bake it at three. Uh, <laughs> I bake it at 350, and it takes about anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes, and until, or until a toothpick comes out clean. And I have one right here for you to do. Mm, that's beautiful. Wow, that's good. And I want to show you. You can also make it into cupcakes. Should we put it over here? Yes. Uh, you can also where make are it you into going cupcakes. At that? Wait a minute. You can also make it into cupcakes. <laughs> Seriously? You're and moving that? I just want to tell you that it freezes wonderfully. So uh -huh. you can make it ahead and freeze it. All right, let's get the taste test. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. She might have to have another bite to decide. Okay. Mmm. Okay. Well, that's good. No, seriously, that's good. Well, of course it's good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we wouldn't share That's that good. recipe with you. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, right now we want to um, share something with our viewers. And we have five cookbooks out now. And we'd like to share with you how you can get yours. If you've enjoyed the recipes today and would like to purchase your own copy of one of their cookbooks, including their new cookbook, Family Favorites, you can write to 3ABN. Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. That's 3ABN. Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Or you can call 618-627-4651. That's 618-627-4651. If you'd like to contact the Mitchiff Sisters for speaking appointments or concerts, you can do so at their website at mitchiffsisters.com. That's M-I-C-H-E-F-F, -F, sisters.com. Hello, I'm Tom Mann. Have you ever wondered what it takes to keep 3ABN's message fresh and up-to-date? We're working constantly on new programs for an ever-growing audience around the world. But how is that accomplished? After working many years in television and radio, I've realized how unusual it is for 3ABN to produce such a large percentage of original quality programming. Most Christian networks use a large number of programs produced by other ministries, and unfortunately, they have little or no control over the content. But we've been called to give a consistent message, and we do not allow the focus to become entertainment or performance oriented. The clear vision given to Danny Shelton, our founder, was to build a television station that would reach the world with the undiluted Three Angels messages, one that would counteract the counterfeits. And that's what we strive for. We just don't provide family-friendly programming. If it's not squarely based on the Bible, our pledge to you is that it will not appear on any of our networks. When it comes to original programming, we produce 69% of our 3ABN English television content, 67% of our 3ABN Latino content, and 100% of what our Russian language channel airs. Without the Lord and all of you, that would be impossible. But we're continuously blessed with the finest teachers, preachers, health presenters, and guests day after day and year after year. So many people work together to make a television program. Producers, directors, camera operators, studio managers, lighting and audiovisual directors and video engineers, just to mention a few. But we never forget that the message is the most important part of the equation and bringing the hope of salvation to those who haven't heard about Jesus Christ. We have only one solution, a relationship with our Savior. And whether it's a story of a changed life or a program specifically for children, we want to bring honor and glory to Him each and every minute of every day. And with six networks airing 168 hours of programming each week, that's a total of 1,008 hours. How can we do this with such a small staff? 
The answer is simple. The Lord makes it possible, and He uses you to help. From the beginning, your prayers and financial support have made it all possible. And 25 years later, our message is still strong. So thank you for all you do for 3ABN. Your prayers are felt each day, both at our ministry headquarters and all around the world. If the Holy Spirit impresses you to support 3ABN's worldwide ministry, please send your tax-deductible love gifts to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call us at 618-627-4651 during regular business hours. God bless you. Well, did you enjoy our trip to Italy as much as we did? I sure loved it. It was fun. I'm actually ready to go back on another trip over to Italy. Oh, let's go. <laughs> well, just to, just to inspire you one more time to get out and make these recipes, That's let's right. show you what we've made today. We oh. have white lasagna. Oh. And they all learned how easy that was to make. <laughs> oh, and the Italian white bean soup. And boy, with that shot, you can see all the little beans in it now. That's right, I and like then that. Then we have orange bundt cake, and it's a nice moist cake. Oh, I can, sure. I can testify to that. She tasted that, and also with your orange glaze frosting. That mm -hmm. was good. And then we have the garlic breadsticks. And folks, remember, you can get out them sesame seeds and omit that garlic. The oh, garlic is wonderful. No, garlic's so good for you. <laughs> oh, and the quinoa vegetable salad. Oh, I love how they're displayed in those peppers, too. Mm -hmm. And then we have eggplant pomodoro. Mm. And that ha is displayed here with the angel hair pasta. But you can use any mm -hmm. pasta of your choice, and it, it would be good. I oh. like, I, my husband likes it over rice. With brown, brown rice. Yeah, brown rice. Mm -hmm. You know what I would like it over? Polenta. Oh, I bet that would be good, I too. I love Give me another polenta. idea there. Hopefully we've given you some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have ideas of what you'd like us to fix, then write us. That's exactly right. And we'll give it a shot. We'll try and make it for you. That's all the time we have for now. So until next time, may all your, your meals be seasoned with, with God's, God's love. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.